Ministers say the only health workers not getting a 1% pay rise are the ones getting a 3% rise already as they move up the incremental pay scale. The NHS, they say, would have to sack thousands of people if it gave everyone the rise that was recommended. But health workers say that's a gross distortion of the facts and hundreds of thousands went on strike today in England and Northern Ireland for the first time in decades. There's more to come too, as our health and social care correspondent Victoria MacDonald reports. From Leeds to London, from Newcastle to Northampton, health workers demanded what they call a living wage. It was a wet, indeed soggy protest from 7 to 11 a.m. They were kept warm, though, by their grievances and their free rain ponchos. Uh, morale is at a lot of time low in the NHS. Um, it's felt in the ward and it impacts on patient care. We say no! On this cold and wet Monday morning, this is probably not such a bad turnout for strike action. Although the government has made a point of saying that fewer than half of those balloted actually voted to walk out today. This is the first in a week of action. The next four days, these workers will work to rule. It was a combined strike by seven unions, representing 400,000 NHS staff, nurses, paramedics, ambulance workers, porters and cleaners. And for the first time in their 133-year history, the midwives joined the picket line. An agreement had been reached between the unions and trusts so that there would be cover for urgent cases and women in labour. I think the government have relied so heavily on our goodwill, you know, the fact that we work hard, we tend not to take our breaks very often, we, we work longer hours than we're paid for. And I, I just think it's come to, you know, and I think people in general will support that. From a personal point of view, I've never felt so badly off um, this year. So I felt personally that it was the best decision to vote. Um, and here we are. What difference would 1% make to you? Obviously, we'd like more, but one is better than nothing, definitely. There were no reports of patients coming to harm, either in England or in Northern Ireland, where 4,000 NHS staff walked out. The London Ambulance Service did, though, use the military and police as backup. The union said this was provocative. This is what drove them out. The independent pay review body recommended that all NHS staff should get a 1% pay rise, but the health secretary intervened, saying this was too expensive, that it would cost around £450 million. So it was only awarded to workers at the top of their band. And that means 60% of NHS staff and 70% of nurses won't receive a pay rise for the next two years. Incremental pay rises awarded as staff move up their bands will remain, but the health secretary said to add on the 1% would mean having to lay off workers. We have very clear analysis that says that if we did that, hospitals next year would lay off around 4,000 nurses and around 10,000 nurses the year after that. And, and that would be very, very dangerous for patients. In fact, the £450,000 cost of the pay rise is the equivalent to 14,000 newly qualified nursing staff, which is not the same as having to lose 14,000 nurses. Yet this does come at a time when the NHS is facing severe financial pressures, with a huge black hole to fill and managers saying there is no give in the system. We can see what pressure the NHS is under. Could you not have waited another year for this? Well, we've been told already that next year it will be the same award. That again, it will be a 1% increase for only those at the top of the grade. But it's not added on to their grade, it's a supplement. So it doesn't count for overtime, doesn't count for social hours payments, doesn't count for pensions. At the end of the year, it disappears. And we've been told that that will happen again next year. No further talks are planned between the unions and the government and with tight NHS budgets, probably for some years to come, this could be just the first of many walkouts by NHS staff. Well, to talk about all of this, I'm joined by the Conservative MP, David Tredinick, a member of the Health Select Committee, and Cathy Warwick, for 38 years, a practising midwife and chief executive of the Royal College of Midwives. David Tredinick, can you tell um, Cathy Warwick why her dedicated members who work beyond their contracts, who Jeremy Hunt praised in the House of Commons today, don't deserve a 1% below inflation pay rise? Well, first of all, 
I think we all respect enormously the work that nurses and ancillary staff do. And every time we go near a hospital, we thank, we thank them for that. But there are finite budget issues here. And I think this issue has been very badly explained. I think the government have tried to explain it, but there is a communication issue here because over half the workers are getting effectively 3%. And there's 1% which is the issue here. Unfortunately, if that 1% goes ahead this year, there will be frontline reductions. There is no more money there. So there has to be some kind of discussion. Well, you chose there has to for be, there to be no more money there. I mean, the, the budgets are set. We've, we've said the coalition government, and it was in the Conservative manifesto, made it quite clear that the health service budget is protected. But the yeah. health service is. But a it's a choice, isn't it? You've cut, you've cut taxes for people like me, the, uh, and you've kept the NHS budget where it is. The health service is a victim of its own success because the more people live longer, the more resources they need. So it goes up exponentially. Kathy, um, could you explain why this 3% rise that the government says you're all getting is not enough? Yes, I could. The fact of the matter is that the way that NHS pay is constructed is that there's a, a rate for the job. If you're a midwife, for example, you qualify out of university, you get a very low salary and you work for nine years. And as you increase your experience and your knowledge, your pay goes up until you reach the fundamental pay of a midwife. But that, that's an alien it's concept a, for a lot of people in the private sector, you know, the idea of automatic pay rises every It's year. a very difficult concept to understand. But the point is, this is the way NHS pay has been constructed for a very long time. To suddenly hear that the government was changing the rules midstream was really annoying and really angered our members. But where would the cuts come? There you know, to pay for this, if you got it? Our argument would be that you need to reward staff reasonably for what they do. And if you make a proper investment in staff, what you're actually doing is investing in high quality care. At the moment, in London, the, health, the bill for agency nurses and midwives is well over 300 million. That's true, isn't it? That's a shocking waste of money. Well, you have to bring in short-term staff, which is the, what agency staff are when you have bulges and changes. You can't just do it all on full-time employees. But I think Kathy's got a very good point. This is something that needs to be looked at. Well, I mean, you know, you, you're a big proponent of alternative medicine, aren't you? Certainly. And yeah. astrology and things like that. I mean, would you rather spend money on that in the NHS I have said than on midwives? And well, I have referred to the fact that in some cultures, astrology is part of healthcare because they need to have a voice, and I got up and, and said that. But I also think we can reduce the bill by using a whole range of alternative medicines, including herbal medicine, acupuncture, which are now homeopathy in the health service. We could probably self save 5% of budget and those alternative remedies very often fix the problems that conventional medicine cannot reach. Would you, would you be happy to see the money spent on all of that rather than... I'm very pay happy to see money invested in positive public health measures, and these might be well at some of them. But fundamentally, I believe that we need to invest in our midwives, in our nurses, in our other healthcare workers. They are essential to deliver what, uh, whatever method of health care we choose to provide. The fact is that health workers have suffered pay restraint now for four years. They've had two years of pay freezes, one year of 1%. And this year, not only is the 1% only being given to some staff, but it is being taken away at the end of the year. Just, just briefly, in 10 seconds, are there going to be more strikes? Unless the government moves? We would like to sit around the table and have more talks with the government. The last thing I want is to see midwives on the picket line again. And I really, really hope that the government will talk to us about possible solutions. And again, just in 10 seconds, I, I presume you're not going to take the MPs' pay rise of 10% while telling them they can't the have MPs one. The MPs' pay rises are fixed by an independent authority. But going back to oh, the... So you are going to take it? Going back to the... Are you going to take it? No, answer this. I... <laughs> I am not getting drawn onto MPs' pay. We're here to talk about the health service. No, we're here to talk about public money. Are you taking the MPs' I pay rise? I am not answering that question on this programme because we're dealing with a health service. Hang on, this and is our money. This is public money that we pay you. Are you going to take the pay rise or not? All members of Parliament will 
be given a pay rise which has been set by an independent authority. Most of those members of parliament will take that pay rise because that is what is deemed necessary to have good public servants. That doesn't mean that we can't have well-rewarded nurses, well-rewarded doctors. And the problem here, listening to Cathy, is we have antiquated structures and, and, and lines there, and I think we need a thorough mental, fundamental root branch reform okay. of this service. David Trudinick and Cathy Warwick, thank you both very much indeed. Thank Kathy. you. Thanks, Chris.